And welcome back. Well, we are back with our long lost entertainment critic, Ryan Jay. He's here. Lost and found. Ah, uh, found shoes. you. Thanks I shoes. love the shoes. Thank you. Yeah, Thank you it's so wonderful. Much. I to love see you guys. Good Aww. to see you. Yeah, good to see you too. We've been missing you. Yes. Um, should we talk about this movie in theaters, Twisters? I'd love to. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, it is more of a reboot than a sequel to the 1989 original Twister. Oh. The only real link between the two is that same contraption that was called Dorothy 2, you know, that they released. It was Han Hunt and Bill Paxton. Yes. They originally made this contraption that was called Dorothy. They released the things into the, you know, trying to study. That contraption makes an appearance in the film, but aside from that, there's really no link between this and the original. Oh, okay. So this is in theaters, which I feel like a Twister movie should be. Yeah. Oh, what's yeah. the plot here? Is it just a storm? It is, well, no, it, it's great. Obviously, there's storms, but it's what's it's very updated. So it takes place in the day of social media where everybody is a storm chaser. Oh. Everybody who's got their own YouTube channel gets out there in social media and is trying to follow. So there's a little bit of competition between gangs, but I love the cast. You've got Glenn Paul Powell, who is like the it man in, in Hollywood right now. Daisy Edgar Jones, who we love. Anthony Ramos, who I love. He was in the Heights, or Hamilton on Broadway. So great. And it's crazy. And Kay's crazy. It's crazy scary. It's crazy. <laughs> a great that, new word. Um, yeah, right? That people actually do this, or that are storm chasers, because yeah. how dangerous it is, right? Um, we have them here. Yeah, and they still have lots of little Wizard of Oz references that I love, like character names and some other things that just pop up that I was like, you know, I think how could you do a movie about tornadoes and not when the, you know, the most iconic tornado in a film is from The Wizard of Oz, so. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, and who's the main actor, the guy who's wearing Glenn the Glenn Powell, yeah. you know him, he's, you've seen him in things, yeah. He's, he's a good looking He's the man act. of the moment. Yeah. Do you believe yeah. the effects here? The effects are so good. If you compare this to the effects of the original, which were great at the time too, this is so, so good. And, you know, it's great because the surround sound. What I loved about seeing mm. this in the theater is like this movie was made for the surround sound. It makes you yeah. feel like you are there. Seems like you need really. to see mm -hmm. this in a theater. And very suspenseful as well. The suspense is very effective. Like you're like, get out of there. You're too close <laughs> to the twister. <laughs> oh my God. And they, yeah, and they, they up a lot of it. The, the original one had a little bit more comedy. Remember when you saw that yeah. cow fly yes. and stuff? Yeah. Like, yeah, this one's not, but see it. It's really, really good. There's a little bit of meteorology talk oh, where you feel like you're- so a little yeah, educational. Little education. You feel like you're in a class a little bit. Um, if you can follow it, great. You might walk out learning something. I was just confused, but right. um, but it's great to see. I would want okay. this in like 3D and like an omni oh, theater, yeah. right? Yeah. That yeah. would be kind of cool. Of that fun. would be nuts. Mm -hmm. um, what about My Spy: The Eternal City? This is rated, rated PG-13, and it's actually streaming on Prime Video. Right? right, and this is a sequel to the 2020 My Spy, which I feel like overall, now that we're talking about these two films, in retrospect, I'm looking at them, and it feels like they were movies that were developed for Dwayne the Rock Johnson, and he just passed on them. Oh, so we get. <laughs> Point. Yeah, so we got Dave Bautista, who's no Dwayne Johnson. <laughs> Okay, so who who are the other stars? What do we need to know? What you need to know is it's very cute. You know what I mean? It's like it's got good action and it's kind of it's like action but without the suspense. So it's a family okay. film sort of um, spy movie and espionage and it's about this this man who's retired from being the CIA because he wants to focus on his new relationship. And it being totally looks like it should be right. Dwayne Johnson. Yes, yes, stepfather to the little girl and um, yeah, and he just is not as good of an actor. And also, you know, this is one of those films where they try to break some of the action with some comedic lines. Mm. and he's not that funny so it uh. will play better to younger audiences but um but it's still really really fun that way and i love that uh, in the supporting cast we have anna ferris a very yeah. brunette anna ferris and she and she plays a different kind of role for her which is really really fun i like him too i don't know his name either but yes. he's great too so would you compare this to other tv movies well compared to you know this is because it's just streaming didn't have a theatrical release if we think about what made for tv movies used to be mm -hmm. there was a real stigma to that we knew what that meant right it was like an yeah. after school special for adults. Yes. Now, the, the movies that we're getting direct to streaming, um, especially in a time where we're seeing fewer movies distributed to theaters, this is a, this could have been in the theater. You know, it's yeah. kind of like a B movie that just gets that doesn't get a theatrical release. And this feels like a real movie. So it's kind of a delightful time to be the people that stream at home or don't go to, if you don't go to the theaters, but stream it. It's a fun one. It's just okay. a really fun one. You'll laugh and enjoy it. A little cheesy at times, but all right. Good family film. Okay, the last one, we got about a minute. Lady in the Lake TV, uh, this is Apple TV Plus. And this is based on the best-selling novel and marks the first time Oscar winner Natalie Portman has ever appeared on television. Oh, oh. wow. Yeah. Okay. So she's the leading lady, I assume. Mm -hmm. Is this binge-worthy? What is it? It's this? so binge-worthy. It takes place in the 1960s suburban life Baltimore, um, the city Baltimore, but it's nothing like Hairspray. It is a crime mystery drama. It's, uh, there's a missing child in town and 
and Natalie is a mother who feels compelled to help out with a child that's gone missing and then also starts pursuing an unsolved murder case. And she had a degree in journalism, but gave that up, you know, in the, in the 60s to become a mother and a wife. And she actually leaves her family to go and return to journalism, try to help solve the, this murder mystery and find that child. And it is so bingeable. It looks the good. First two, it is so good. Apple TV Plus is like the HBO of our time. Like they yeah. are doing the best, I gotta best get, series. I don't Apple have any plus. I tell you, everything I watch on there, every, they're all my favorite series are on Apple TV Plus. Ugh. Stream it, it's excellent. First two Just episodes. Just rub it in, why don't you? Yeah. <laughs> first two episodes are available now, and then for the next five weeks, we get one more episode. Doses. <laughs> I know, like, <laughs> Fake <laughs> laughter. <laughs> I have every streaming thing that there is, yeah. known to man. My pity laughter, like, oh. Yeah. yeah. You're so sad you don't have Apple yeah. TV Plus, because all my favorite shows are I on know, that. I know, I know. How sad for you. Oh, uh, you can follow Ryan J on social media, at Ryan J Reviews, and for his full archive of entertainment reviews, to help you decide what to see, stream, or skip, or which apps to pay for, yeah, or exactly. get a free streaming, there you, you know, go. To whatever it's called, RyanJReviews.com. Maybe he's employed by Apple TV+. <laughs> <laughs>